previously on the Sunless Citadel. But before he goes to bed, Murph doesn't say anything to Methuselah. He kind of just gives him a look. <laughs> well, he's all yours now. Where, where did you come from before the Feywild? At this moment, Thorn is kind of distracted when his eyes land on the steps. There he sees a silhouette that at first he doesn't truly understand what it is. But as he focuses his attention a little bit towards it, he realizes it. It is Thorn's dad half alive looks at you and then falls backwards into the abyss below. I think it's time to shut up now. To the west looms the surviving structure that best resembles dragon scales. Can I do like a history check on like what appears to be dragon scales? It is quite easy for you to realize that this is sure a fortification from the draconic empire. But then they are flashes in your mind where you saw a looming fortress in the distance as you were dragged towards a fortress that leads you to pain. But anyway, you bring yourself back after a few moments. With that, all of you guys gather, grab the stuff that you guys used to rest and proceed down, down towards the darkness and into the South Citadel. Throughout the vastness of the multiverse, there lies a tavern. As you approach its doors, you catch bubbles of laughter that rise and burst into cheers as colorful groups of travelers find comfort in their bonds. As you head inside, the smile of the tavern keeper greets you. They're an otherworldly being with a bluish corporeal form. They wear attire befitting of an innkeeper, and they have a large cloudy nebula for hair speckled with stars which gently sways with their movement. Welcome to the Storyteller's Tavern, where stories are served like ale and a seat is open for you at every table. Tonight's special is the Sunless Citadel, an epic adventure of high fantasy with notes of friendship, danger, and most importantly, hope. Will our adventure survive to descent into the dungeon? Or is there a dark and calamity taking roots far from the sun's reach? Meanwhile, all this is going on more. This is just like slowly getting up. Just like, all right, I'm to get my bearings. Thorn takes out a rope. It's 50 feet and he throws it but he doesn't hold the other end, so it just drops onto Mortis, and he's like, yeah! Mortis stands to the best of his ability so that he does not injure himself any further. Carefully doing so, that means that you are gonna be walking through difficult terrain because you are making sure where you step, taking a slower time. Inside of this pit, you see that you're not the only one. There is also, it seems to be, a skeleton. This skeleton, it's small in stature. It has some weird, tattered cloth and around its waist area, which could imply a loincloth of sorts. A very small string with a purse in the end is across its chest cavity. And it has a small scimitar beside it and a very small, almost like a buckler shield on the other side as well. But as it was disturbed by your fall, there are small silhouettes, dark silhouettes that are going around it as well. And that's when you notice that a swarm of rats that must have fallen here at some point to do years of abandonment now is ready to attack and is hissing at you because they probably haven't had food in a long time. And as you're preparing yourself for combat, a bundle of rope falls beside you. <sighs> roll initiative. Should we also roll initiative? Yeah, I'll allow everybody to roll initiative because I don't know if you guys want to go down as well. Yeah, we'll or... help them. Yeah, so we can like jump in in combat at some point. We're starting this round of combat as you guys hear the hissing inside of the pit. 
a uh, seeker wants to call down. Hey, Mortis, uh, what do you see down there? If you're alive. There's more of those vermin. Rats? Methuselah, it is your turn. So Methuselah didn't really pay attention to that conversation. They're still kind of mourning the death of Mortis right now. Um, so they've taken out their hurdy-gurdy and they're playing a song of a sad old turtle who died in a horrible accident, but is now reunited with his wife. And as um, I'm gonna give bardic inspiration to Mortis as when I'm playing, my strings go all rainbow colored. And so you, you get bardic inspiration. Sweet. Um, and since I'm half, kind of half-mindedly still playing, I, that's going to be all for my action, because I don't really know that Mortis is fine. <laughs> all right, now next is the rats. This swarm is clearly too agitated to properly attack you. They start to climb up to your legs, but not really affect you, because for some reason they aren't able to focus. So they spend their whole turn just within your area, but cannot attack you. Thorn, it is your turn. Is it possible for me to attack the rats without harming Mortis? It would be difficult to see them, but you guys can you guys can see that there are things around Mortis and stuff. So you could shoot or throw things at it. Uh, of course, uh, it will be difficult, and there is a chance of hitting Mortis. So Thorn is just going to use his free action to yell, STOP YOUR HORRIBLE MUSIC AND HELP MORTIS! And then, um, well he has one torch on his belt, he'll take it off, he'll light it, and then he'll just kind of go, YEAH! And drop it down to where the pit is. Now it is brightly lit within the bottom of the pit. You guys, whoever's looking down, can see the garbage spikes in the bottom, the skeleton of the very small creature, plus mortars being surrounded by rats. Is there any way for him to safely go down the pit, or is it just like straight down, or is there like a decline he can go down? It is a straight down, straight drop. It is rough rock, so very carefully you might be able to start climbing down if you fail on the check though you will plummet he he likes mortis too much so he'll start climbing down he kind of loses all sense like a small dog so with your action you can start climbing down the wall of this pit give it to me a athletics check i got a two you are able to get about four feet in when your feet slips from one of the uh, footholds that you are trying to purge yourself on and that's a drop 20 feet drop plus the spikes so roll for me to these sits i got uh three bludgeoning and then one piercing and now roll another d4 for the poison uh two another contender has entered the combat <laughs> You hear like yeah as a uh, torch lands beside you, and before you can even open your mouth to say thank you, you hear ah as he lands directly beside you, and he kind of looks up at you and is like, "I'm helping." All right, so I take it that that's the end of Thorn's turn. Um, with that, now it's Seeker's turn. Um, Seeker's going to um call down to Mortis and now to Thorn as well. Uh, if you guys win down there, uh, could you bring up a few of those rats for me? I'd really appreciate it. I'm just gonna stay up here so I can help pull you up, because I don't want to leave poor Methuselah to lift all of us. I'm not the lightest tabaxi, so I want to be here to help. Noted. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be what Seeker does. All right, Mortis, your turn. So Mortis is going to, like, as soon as he sees the rats coming up to him, he's gonna pull out his greatsword, and he's just going to lean back, so like, all right, bring it. And then he's going to, like, raise it over his head and try to slash at the, at the rats. 
I'm going to use my inspiration too. That's a 19. 19 to hit, for sure. All right. That hits. Roll for the damage. That is 11 damage. A powerful swipe goes and cuts a good chunk of the uh, rats. But it's almost like hitting water where a good chunk of them are still moving so fast around you that it's the attack doesn't do as much damage as you would expect it to do. They have resistance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's all I can do for my turn. So that's, I'll, I'll end my turn there. Top of the round, Methuselah. So when Thorin kind of yells at Methuselah, he gets a little jolted. And then that kind of has him like play just the wrong thing. And so the notes kind of get more um, like creepy. And then the strings of the instrument kind of turn violet uh, as the color of the air becomes this jagged kind of purpley notes. And it just kind of gets like cast down towards the rats and they have to do a little wisdom save. Does a 12 pass? That fails. So they take 10 psychic damage and they have to move as far away as their speed allows. Mortis, as this weird wave of violet musical notes just descends upon you, you, Thorn, who's currently half standing, half lying down, uh, and all the rats. The rats screech in unison, and then they start to bolt as fast as they can towards the left side of the wall of this pit, which is still within range of view, but it's like there's nowhere else for them to go. <laughs> so they are all like scratching the wall, <laughs> trying to run away and get out. Now are the rats, so they try to disperse the best they can. Some goes into small holes, some try to hide behind the pieces of garbage. Most of them goes behind the skeleton. But as they try to disperse, you notice that a good chunk of them died as the wave of magical notes descended upon them. So it's easy to say that combat ended. I live. <laughs> You live. Uh, Thorn will pick up his kind of rope, probably get himself tangled in it a little bit, and he'll look up at Mortis and be like, We did it! Mortis just like lets out a deep sigh of relief, and he's just like, Yes, yes, my friend, we did. We lived another day. <laughs> and then uh, Methuselah is gonna take out the rope and just kind of like cast it down, but still like hold one end and maybe if I can like tie it to something so I'm not having to pull them up and they can just climb up themselves because I don't think I could handle their weight. This bit is somewhat close to one of the Merlins towards its either right or left side. It's like a 10 feet difference between where the bit is and the Merlin. And there's just five feet difference between the door and the Merlin. The door currently does have a handle. So those are the only two places that I can realistically think that you could tie the rope. Like if you put it on the door, there's going to be 45 feet of rope that can still go down this 20 feet drop. Or if you put it on the, the Merlin, it will be about... 30 feet of rope that can still go down on, the mer on this bit. Yeah, I'll assume that the Merlin is kind of like more sturdy. So I'll kind of tie it around that, giving like a little collar and, you know, cast it down and look over and be like, huh, you guys can uh, use this. Uh, roll for me a dexterity performance check. I'm going to use knowledge of a past life. Okay, that's a dirty 20. It seems safe enough, the knot that you used to tie this rope. Thorn and Mortis, you guys have now a rope that extends to you from the, from the top of the pit. You guys can now use your athletics check to climb. It will be done with advantage due to the rope. 
Thorn puts his rope away after untangling himself from it. And then he looks at Mortis. And he looks at the rope. And he looks at Mortis. Expectingly, like, he's waiting for Mortis to go first. Uh, Mortis is gonna, like, glance at the rope and Thorn is like, uh, You can go ahead. You're, you're lighter. It's probably safer that way. <laughs> okay. And then Thorn's gonna start climbing up it. I got a 17. Easily you're able to climb up the rope. Um, before Mortis climbs up, he's gonna, like, he's gonna glance up to the left side where the rats fled from. And, like, is it just, like, sort of cracks that they fled into? Or is there some sort of small passage or anything? Uh, it's just very small cracks and crevices. Um, there's also the skeleton. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna uh, turn my attention to that. I guess first he'll call up to the rest of them. He's like, uh, "There's a, there's a skeleton here. Some, some unfortunate soul who left who met their fate. Uh, it might seems a bit old, so it might, it might not. I don't believe this is who we were looking for, but anything's possible." Suppose so. Does it have anything on them? You know, sort of identifier, like, you know, gold or, or sort of clothing or anything like that? Thorn is like, probably like hiding between Methuselah's legs, and he goes, STEAL THEIR STUFF! Oh, I, I agree. Not so much with the stealing, but it could help us if we understand more about this the skeleton you know if if you bring the things up with you we can maybe find the family of this poor unfortunate soul uh so Mort- mortis is gonna grab the the purse and the weapons before he like he like he puts those things into his backpack and before he heads up the rope he does like a short prayer to she over the over the body may you find rest and then he he slowly trudges over to the rope and and starts to climb up. Uh, that is a dirty 20. Easily you climb it up. Although it has the sharp pain from the uh, cuts and stuff, and you should be able to go up. And you climb up to the very end. All right, you guys now are all together again at the top of the battlements with this trap beside you guys. Hopefully there's nothing else before you guys reach the door. When Mortis, like, climbs back up and has his footing, Thorn starts, like, w- walking around one of his legs in, like, a circle with a bandage just kind of, like, wrapping his leg up as he's using one of the uses of the healing kit so that uh, Mortis can heal. All right, so uh, that that's 12 total healing that I do. Awesome. You already feel a little bit better after being, um, after the help of the healer's kit. Um, so when, like, you know, Mortis is getting wrapped up, Methuselah's going to be like, so, uh, what did you find on the body? Oh, uh, well, there was there was uh, these weapons. There was a, a scimitar and a shield, and uh, and I found this little purse pouch. I'm not sure. I, I thought I'd wait till I was with you all to look inside of it. Seeker, Seeker's gonna take it, and they're going to open it. Well, let's see what's in here. Within, you can see some coins inside. When you look through them, you're able to calculate that there is a total of 23 silver pieces and 4 gold pieces. Well, I suppose we can divide this amongst ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we do have 3 silver left over. Uh, does any- I think maybe Mortis should get at least one, because he found the purse. And Thorn went down to help Mortis, so he should get one of the silver pieces. And, and Methuselah, I really liked your song, so I think you should get the third extra silver piece. Oh, well, thank you, friend. Seems agreeable to me. Thank you, Seeker. Oh, I just thought that was for the best. The three of you did really, really well there. Uh, there's also these weapons. I, I don't have much use for them myself, but it would seem dishonorable to a warrior to just leave them with the body. Are they in, like, good condition to use, or are they rusted and old? Because imagine it's been here for a very long time. They are old, yes. A good amount of dust covering it. A little bit of rust here and there, but it's mainly useful. 
I'm surprised they're in this good condition. Uh, I, I don't mind taking the scimitar, if that's all right. Of course. Uh, if anything, this poor soul, their, their weapon will get some more use in this life. Yes, indeed. He's gonna hand the scimitar off to Methuselah. As for this shield, does anyone would anyone like it? Eh, I don't need it. I don't really have much of a use for a shield. It would kind of get in the way, really. But would you mind holding on to it, just in case we we find these adventurers, and perhaps one of them could take it for some extra protection? That's agreeable. Uh, similarly to you, I don't really use shield as my weapon is more of a two-handed thing, and I have a natural shield, and he, like, taps his shell. Uh, would you, what about you, Methuselah? Would you like the shield? Oh, well, I, I sort of use both my hands ah. when I'm um, playing my instrument. Of course. Well, as Seeker suggested, I'll keep it on me for now. Well, then... <laughs> That inglorious start to our quest aside, perhaps we should get a move on. Yes, and we should definitely be a little bit more cautious about traps. Indeed. I'm not sure these old bones could take another fall like that. <laughs> oh, Thorn, don't think that we blame you. This trap was not really something that we were expecting, and I don't think you looked at this particular area, so... You're fine. You were doing a great job looking for traps earlier. It was this trap. It was the mechanisms of a genius. (laughs) Perfect. That's all. He just kind of makes a noise. It's like Tina from Bob's Burger. Like, (laughs) oh, he's like... As you guys are speaking to him, because he doesn't like being perceived. Um, but Thorn will, now that we're in the entrance area, as we're going, continue looking for traps. Alright, you guys reach the entrance, the heavy wooden door that leads to the interior of the Sunlight Citadel. You weren't even in? <laughs> That was outside the door? That was outside. (laughs) That was the welcome mat. (laughs) Yeah. I imagine that you guys tried the door. Yes. You guys pull it open. And inside, it's no more than five feet in, where you guys are still able to see just fine because of the light. But beyond the five feet is complete darkness. Through your dark visions, you're able to see very dimly inside, but it's very, very detrimental to the understanding of the interior. You're in the circular area and it's cobbled by cracked stones and debris. You guys are able to see sprawled on the ground bodies of four goblins. Apparently slain in combat, one of the corpses stands upright against the western wall, as a spear that killed it is still skewering and holding it aloft. Three wooden doors, this is counting the war that you just went through, is also in this area. This hollow tower has loose masonry that reaches up to 30 feet in the air, but its intervening floors and stairs are long gone due to the catastrophe that made it fall, or maybe just erosion. Except for a couple crumbled ledges that you guys can still see at the very top, until the darkness consumes the rest of your vision. Can I see if there's anything on the goblins to loot? Sure. Can I loot a goblin as well, then? Does anyone else want to loot a goblin so we each get, like, one? We can, like, divide the stuff throughout the party if we want to, aside from gold. Is Thorn mentally disturbed by the dead goblins? Yes. Uh, he probably, like, sees the dead goblins, and he probably just crawls up Mortis and hides in his shell. Um, Mortis, like, taps his shell lightly so that so that Thorn can hear the reverberations, like, it's alright. 
That won't happen to you, my friend. When Mortis taps his shell for him, it's just like quiet. Usually he's like mumbling to himself, but he's gone a little quiet. As we're interacting with the bodies, uh, can I light a torch? Sure you can. And that provides bright light, which illuminates the whole area. You guys quickly look at the corpses, and there's no pouches, no pockets, and those do have pockets within their weird tattered cloths and makeshift uh, garments have nothing inside, which implies that they have been looted already. Can Seeker go and yank the spear out of the one that's still standing? Sure you can. I just wanted to know, like, what does this room smell like? Do these bodies smell fresh, or have they been here for a time that they're now starting to rot? There is a foul smell of decomposing within this place. What do the bodies look like in terms of decomposition? They are still very much easily distinguishable as goblins. Their features have not yet been compromised by the decay. Most of its color has lost due to the coagulation of the blood closest to the ground. But it has dried up to where the wounds are. Which you can roll an intelligence check, investigation, to determine how long it is. Or medicine, to determine how long they have been. I'm going to roll a medicine. That's a 17. Easily a few days old. Uh, And then I'm going to look at Seeker and be like, Well, I suppose this is a good sign that we're on the right trail because... uh, You know, these bodies have seemingly been here for a number of days. It's not like the other body we found. Yeah, I suppose this does mean we're on the right track. You're right. And as Seeker finishes that sentence, Seeker pulls out the spear. The spear is makeshift. It's not good quality spear. And it's actually quite small. Just a bit longer, a few centimeters longer than a javelin, you would say. So it would be most appropriate for a smaller stature creature. When the body falls to the ground, it makes a horrible bluff sound on the ground. It reveals a weird writing on the wall. And it's almost like scratches in some way, but it has a pattern to it, which implies that it would be more of a scripture more than just carvings. Do you read Draconic? I don't, but can I say something? Yeah, go for it. Uh, hey, uh, Methuselah, could you come here for a moment? Oh, yes, sure. What, what is it? Uh, there's this, like, writing here on the wall that I don't... I don't know what language it's in. Uh, do you know what this is? I'm gonna look at the wall, and yes, I do know Draconic. Starting with the fact that the scripture is incomplete. It's clear that the debris and the erosion caused the damage to have this thing fragmented. What you read is equivalent to Arden left tower. And I mean Arden as R-D-E-N left hour, because it is incomplete. Well, it's sort of hard to make out, but it says Arden left tower. At least that's what I can sort of make out of it. What what language is this, Methuselah? Oh, it's draconic. Well, that's very interesting. It, it makes sense because, you know, The Empire is here and whatnot, so there's a lot of dragons in Destry. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Methuselah. You're welcome. I just hope that we don't run into any uh, draconic salts. I hope we don't either, because I feel like, well, we'd be a very, very tasty bunch in a lot of different ways. Imagine the fusion food they could make from the four of us. I don't want to picture it. 
See, I'm mostly bones, so I don't know how good uh, food I'd be, but I have played songs for a dragon before, and it, it, it was not fun. Constant nerves of doing something wrong or playing the wrong note. Um, you know, the dragon sort of sometimes getting upset and spitting acid. You know, those sort of things. Well, if I were a dragon, I would just simply adore your music. But, I mean, even bones can be used to make, like, soup. Let's really hope this doesn't happen. See, that's the unfortunate thing. The dragon really liked my music. That's probably why I'm... And I kind of really awkwardly look at myself, just, like, looking down, just alive. Well, I'm certainly glad that you're alive. Yes, alive. What else do you guys do in this tower? Uh, so I'd like to check the left door for any sort of, like, just sounds, anything that's, like, around the front. I'm gonna stay away from, like, the foot of the door just in case there's a pit. Valid, you approach the door to the left, and this door, there is the sound of the occasional wind whistling about. But this is not too surprising for you, as this is a ruin that fell, so there's a lot of crevices you imagine that could provoke this escaping wind and air to create the sound of whistling. I'm gonna do a perception. Go for it. That's a 19. You're quite confident that there is no traps on this door. Nothing that stands out. Well, uh, this door seems clear. I, I, I'm i not an expert on traps and whatnot, but there's only the sound of wind from behind. Do we want to try going through that door, do we think? I suppose we could. I mean, the, the, the words on the wall did say left. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to start there. Well, as long as I'm not the first one to go through, I've, I've fallen through enough pits today. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> Don't worry, if you fall, I'll pull you up this time. <laughs> no one speak at once to go through the door. <laughs> uh, Seeker's gonna be right behind Methuselah. <laughs> Can I say that I, like, I go to the door, and I slow- I'm behind it, right? And I slowly open it, but stay behind the door, so I just kind of close myself in on the wall. <laughs> you approach the door, and you're able to pull it open slowly and carefully, so you are not exposed to whatever it is beyond the threshold. And then you find yourself enclosed by the door and the wall. I'm gonna try to like slither out, just using my like malnourished body to just kind of shimmy out awkwardly. <laughs> you guys see this very interesting scene of your friend, the elven Methuselah, that's just squirming out of behind the door that he just opened with a torch in his hand still. So, is there anything in there? Do I see anything in there? Uh, with your dark vision, you're able to see that there is more debris and rubble within. Nothing really stands out. As far as I can see, it's just more of the same, you know? Uh, some more debris, some more rubble. I don't see any danger, really. I, th I think it's safe for you to come out, Methuselah. Well, good enough for me. You guys can see this deep room. The cobblestone is somewhat crumbling from the walls, creating the debris at the bottom. And there's not much in terms of description for there's too much debris to discern what once was inside of this room. All you can see is a pile of rubble in the very end that covers the entire bottom of the wall. A little bit short to that wall where the robo is, there is a door that leads further in. Um, can we do a perception check to see if there's like anything to notice about this room that we're not immediately noticing? Go ahead. Could I also do one? Sure. I got a 10. 
I got a 14 and I used my bardic inspiration. Although this place is littered with stone and debris, there is nothing too much in here for you guys to really perceive and notice it as uh, something that stands out. All that you can think is that in this huge pile of rubble that is on the very end of this room, it's big enough rubble piled up that if something was buried in there, it would be the only thing concealing within this room. And then there's the door. From underneath Mortis's shell, Thorn kind of goes, are we, are we out of that room? I don't smell it anymore. Yes, my friend, we're, we're out of the room with the goblins. You, you, you can come out now. Yeah, Thorn will crawl out and crawl down Mortis's body. And then he looks at the pile of rubble and goes, That's a lot of rocks. Indeed it is. Uh, it seems to be the only thing of interest in here, so perhaps we should investigate? I suppose we could. We could kind of sort of see if there's anything hidden under there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, because, I mean, if something were to hide in this room I know that if I were hiding in this room that's where I would hide I don't know how long for but that's where I would hide you guys approach the rubble on this door made of stone you guys can see how it is carved to resemble a luxurious door almost as if it was one of those like uh, two panels door but carved within the stone. A lock key on one end with a handle covering it. And on the relief of the door is a reeling dragon about to take flight. What color is the dragon? Is the color the same as the stone? Could I discern from the features of the dragon? Because there are different like a red dragon looks different from a blue dragon and looks different from a white dragon and looks different from a gold dragon all that kind of stuff and specifically i know in your world the chromatic dragons do look different from metallic dragons which i imagine it's a chromatic dragon but you know roll an intelligence check with advantage it's 11. maybe it's because of how damaged this figure is on the relief because it's missing one of its wings, a bit of like there's parts of it that are cracked and stuff that does not give you distinguishing features enough to know what kind of dragon it is. As Methuselah is looking at the door a little bit closer, the rest of the group is able to reach the rubble and taking a quick look just to see if there is a way for you guys to start like digging into it. One of you guys, I'm gonna say Thorn, gets close to the to the rubble when a hissing sound comes out of the rubble, and with it, more rats. It starts to emerge from the rubble, and you guys roll for initiative. King rats. Top of the round, Seeker. Uh, Seeker is going to very dexterously, I hope throw their dagger and try and like spear one of the rats with it are the rats small enough for that yeah they are i would say that they are big enough to for you to like skewer them if you want to make a kebab of rats i think you can fit two of on the dagger until there's not enough blade anymore does an 11 hit yes yeah um so that's gonna be seven damage to that rat you stab one of the rats and it easily stays at the blade tip of your dagger. Overall, it's one rat amongst many. So it's not as much damage as you would imagine. Snack for later. Exactly. Eat it straight off of the dagger. And as um, their free action, all rat. So we lost those rats last time, but we can get the ones this time. Don't obliterate them completely just kill them rat swarm b emerges just in front of mortis so they are able to engage and attack mortis and thorn they move in 
five feet, so they are within the same space as Mortis. And they start to attack Mortis first, being the closest and the biggest target. Does a seven hit? It does not. Uh, they try to bite, but you're able to protect yourself, swatting them out of the way before they are able to sink their small rodent teeth into you. Next is Methuselah. So I'm going to kind of s turn around and see the rats, and I'm going to, you know, take out Yorick, and then the instruments, strings, are going to kind of change into this violet co color as I'm playing, and uh, I'm creating this sort of, like, comical tune that is kind of making fun of, like, rats' as, like, little small little feet as they did, 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 you know like that type of like fast paced kind of thing uh and the music is going to kind of appear in the air in these like violet colors like just the notes and they're going to become sharp and jagged like glass as i'm doing vicious mockery onto this swarm of rats and making fun of their small little legs and their small little stature are you doing onto the swarm B or Swarm A? Swarm B being the one that attacked Mortis, Swarm A being the one that was attacked by Seeker. I'm gonna do Swarm B. Give me a wisdom save. Total of three. They fail. The sharp musical notes, hued in violet color, bolts towards each of these small little rats some of them falls a moving. Thorn, your turn. Thorn is gonna turn to the rat swarm that's attacking Mortis, and he's gonna use primal savagery. So, this kind of blue light seems to kind of glow from the butterfly wings that are kind of tangled in his hair. His eyes glow as his claws and his teeth seem to get a little bigger and start dripping with a s green substance that seems to be like steam and it smells bad and he goes quite feral as he just starts trying to slash into this swarm all right roll for your attack i got a one i get back a bardic inspiration thanks college of tragedy yes you do but unfortunately with a fumble Hitting a creature that is occupying the same space as Mortis. That means that Mortis, unfortunately, will get a little bit scratched up. Take four acid damage. So in his, like, feral state for this instant, he just blindly starts attacking Mortis's toes, thinking that they're little rat feet. But yeah, uh, he, like, bites onto Mortis's ankle. And then it only lasts for an instant. So within like a split second, he's suddenly back to normal and he backs up and goes, oh, gross feet. Next is the swarm of rats A, which was just attacked by Seeker. Therefore, it shall move five feet into Seeker's space. As that is swarm Seeker, it starts to bite Seeker. A total of four to hit. No. Seeker is so agile, swatting the rats before they can actually cause any damage. And with that, that's the rat's turn. Mortis, it is your turn now. So Mortis is going to get suddenly bit by Thor. He's just going to give him a glance of confusion before he's like, he just like recomposes himself. He's going to grab his greatsword, pull it out, and he's just going to shout. He's just going to be like, I am so tired a vermin and he's just gonna slash out at the at the nearest of the rat group that attacked him uh 24. <laughs> that's a red all right wow i wonder if that hits that is 11 damage you do a wide arc with your sword as you swipe a good chunk of the rats making them fly and hit the rubble behind it although it's still like hitting against water a lot of it still goes by as you hit. It's not as effective as you wish it was. Top of the round, it is now Seeker's turn. Yeah, so Seeker is gonna take that little makeshift spear that they found, and they're going to try and just, just get as many rats with it as they can. 
does a three hit. Unfortunately not. The rats are moving too sporadically for you to be able to get a hit on them. All right, next is the turn of the swarm bee. And that is the one hitting Mortis. It's gonna change its strategy now and hit Thorn. A total of 21 to hit. That hits. A total of seven piercing damage as some of the rats moves away from the from the massive swing of Mortis's blade and starts to attack you instead. Small bites, prickles, and cuts deep into your flesh. Okay, on top of that, I need you to do a constitution check for me. Four. Okay. That is the turn of the rats. All right. What happened to the con saving throw? Oh, don't worry. Mephusla, your turn. The strings of Yorick are going to stay kind of in this violet hue as now this comedic song turns slightly from musing on their stupid little tiny feet to musing on their stupid tiny little teeth that just go nee, 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 nee. so I'm doing this dee, 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 kind of like in a different kind of out of tune thing and I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery again because I don't really want to engage. A total of 17? And that passes, nothing happens. Next is Thorn. Thorn is going to kind of like frustratingly stomp his feet and seeing um, Thusala start making fun of the rats, Thorn is gonna kind of join in on it as he looks at the rats and he's gonna um, point at their tails and go, eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
An 11 to hit. That's a hit. And it's eight piercing damage. Quick stabs and thrusts. You're able to damage many of them. It's not as much as you wish you were because they are very fast, but you caused some considerable damage there. Methuselah, it is your turn. Methuselah is going to keep playing and the strings are still this kind of like violet shade. But as these rats seem to sort of like explode in the air and come crashing down, I play that you know, like with the cannons. But instead, I'm just imagining it being rats, like rats falling, rats falling, you know, that type of thing. As I'm casting a vicious mockery on the other swarm of rats to kind of like deter their like morale <laughs> with these exploding cannon rats. A 18. It does not deter them, unfortunately. Hunger, it's more motivational than the intimidation of rats falling. All right, Thorn, it is your turn now. Thorn is going to uh, cast Eldritch Blast and he's gonna aim it at the rats that are attacking Seeker. So as he casts the spell, a sort of like red light kind of glows around, just like his aura, I guess you could say, as this bundle of flowers appears in his hand. And as he throws them, they're like little flower rockets that fly towards the rats. And they have this kind of like orange, green, very like nice floral look to them. And they also smell quite pleasant. All right, roll for the damage and attack. That's a dirty 20 to hit. Those hit. All right, roll for the damage. Take 10 force damage. A powerful impact from the blast of flowery, fragrant projectile hits the floor around Seeker. A blast pretty much blows up like a bunch of its rats upwards. Not like it's exploding the rats, but like just like the impact pushes them away. But when the flowers hit, it's kind of like an explosion of petals start raining down. It's very cute. All right. And with that, now it's the Swarm A. And with its turn, it's gonna take its action to disengage and disperses back into the rubble. You've reached the end of this episode of The Sunless Citadel. Thank you so much for listening. Subscribe to us on whatever app you use to listen to podcasts and be sure to catch the next installment of The Sunless Citadel every Thursday at 12 p.m. EST. If you like the show, please consider leaving a review. It's a small way to show your support that goes a long way. To connect with us, follow our social media accounts, and if you'd like to support us, you can head over to our Patreon to join the conversation, view sneak peeks of our next project, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Our intro score was created by Patrick Corton from Off the Beaten Path Musical. The Sunless Citadel can be found in Tales from the Yawning Portal by Wizards of the Coast. The world of Nosomundus was created by Pedro Stockler. Thanks again for listening from all of us at the Storyteller's Tavern.